Welcome to another episode of Bargaming Saturdays. Instead of writing out an entire script for this episode, I guess instead of just going in blind, I decided to do like bullet points on notepad documents. So I hit the more important points that bug me about the movie. And then I guess I can just sort of work my way through the conclusion I have about the movie as a whole. Amazon Jack was released in Region 1 on 2014, of August of 2014, sorry, to be more precise. Or at least that's what being a PS suggests when it was going to come out, since someone's apparently edited since then to say it did come out then. I actually found it in an 8 animated feature films collection, Volume 2, which I got for $5 in the bargain bin, so I got 8 animated movies, at least 4 of which I know I already have. But, I don't think I had Amazon Jack yet, because I think I will remember the movie with a fox kid on it. At any rate, the movie was originally made in 2007. It's a CGI movie, obviously. If you couldn't tell from the picture on the box, if you could see it. Um, yeah. Maybe the webcam isn't the best choice for showing an image of the box art, but yeah. We have a 2007 anime CGI movie that's meant to be a follow-up to an animated cartoon series which itself was a sequel to a second movie in a series about a character named Hugo. Yes, they changed the character's name, and no, I don't know why, considering the first two movies were released in 2005 stateside, and both of them kept the character's name as Hugo. So when they released the third movie... Nine years after the first two movies came out in the U.S., they changed his name over to Jack. No idea why. Then again, that's like asking why they decided to bring over a 93 and 96 movie in 2005. On DVD, no less. I just, I, just, I don't get it. I mean, were people really demanding to see this Denmark animated TV animated series? Because I never heard anyone really asking about Hugo. I never even knew about about this series until I picked up, tried looking on Wikipedia about this movie, get some more details about when it came out and stuff. Though, so yeah, there was a name change of the character. Why? Like I said, no idea. As for the age range for the people that are, I guess, the intended audience, I'd probably say it's P it's a PG movie, so. Probably six and under to be honest. Well, actually, it's not rated. It's the only movie on this box not to be rated. Though, considering some of the contents, I'd understand why it's difficult to rate the movie. Though, I'll get into that when we get to the story. So, I guess we should move on to that. For the plots, basically, various people want to own Jack for their own selfish interests. Prima Donna wants to use him as a mascot to help sell perfume with her name on it, based on her jungle dream. Um, the general wants to own him because he wants to simply be seen as respectable amongst all the other world leaders, I guess, by having a rare animal. Which is basically a throwback to a plot point, I guess, from the first movie. Because I was watching a little bit of clips from the first part. But I guess it's been uploaded to YouTube. Probably illegally, obviously. But yeah, I was flipping through it. And apparently an actress wants a rare pet because she feels that she's not adequate without having a rare pet like other actors and actresses do. So, that only goes into an, a later point I have, too, I guess. And basically, Jack just wants to be free. And that's basically all the story we really get. Uh, the failings of the story? Well, one, there's just an overuse of the damsel in distress plot device. Jack gets captured so many times you can make a counting gag with it, especially if you start adding in Rita as another character that gets damseled a lot in this episode movie. Not episode, it's a, it's a movie. Yeah, yeah. his best friend is Rita the Fox, which they sort of press that there's some sort of love... love... Ro I shouldn't say love, romantic relationship between them. Why a fox would be interested in a almost nondescript, ultra-rare mammal who looks a bit like a bear, but isn't a bear is beyond me, considering they're not even the same species, or even being close to the same same in terms of appearance. Another issue that sort of bugs me are all the failed, failed fart charts in the beginning of the movie. While they only happen in like two or three times, I don't know why they're there at all. I guess you could say not being able to enjoy potty humor is a sign of old age, and therefore I'm showing that I'm getting older, and I just 
don't care for these types of jokes anymore. But at the same time, I think what really kills them, why I don't want them there, is because there's just not very good comedic timing on any of them. I mean, there is a point, when it comes to comedy, a good thing you have to keep track of is timing, and sometimes it's the mistiming of something. You, you have to both telegraph that you're going to do something, but then do it in a way that you're not, the audience is not expecting, or at least not when they're expecting it. Another issue are the lazy names. I already brought up the general, I believe, earlier, but there's, and Prima Dom, yes, yes, I talked about her perfume thing, yeah. And I have to wonder, how much do your parents have to hate you to give you names like Prima Donna or a first name of The? I mean, seriously, since he's called The General, doesn't that mean his first name is The? How much do his parents hate him to give him that name? Seriously, how much? How much do your parents have to hate you to give you not even a title as your first name? <sighs> Beats me. And then the movie has to hurt itself the most by having an ending that just comes completely out of left field. We see our protagonist getting captured by a mad scientist who wants to clone him. By and to clone him, he has to study his innards, supposedly. So he's going to cut him open and study his organs. So basically, he's going to kill Jack in order to hopefully be able to clone him successfully. So he can make millions selling, selling him to zoos all around the world. Of course, if you can make millions upon millions of clones, all of a sudden they're not very valuable anymore, are they? Never mind the fact that the cloning process is very difficult, and quite frankly, if you only need to inject a cell into an egg, what purpose does studying his internal organs really do for you? I mean, he's still a mammal, so wouldn't just about anything be able to work with him relatively rare, rare, not rare, well, I'm sorry, struggling over my words a bit. I mean, I guess my lack of sleep starting to show here. <sighs> but I think there are some issues that really push this plot away from being a kid's movie. For one thing, there's a stoner butterfly. And if he's not suffering from being on an intoxicated high from drinking fruit juice, of all things, he's very apathetic and almost narcissistic about everything. Both of which things really didn't need to be in a kid's movie, considering they're probably they're too young, I think, to really get narcissism, nor should they really have to be exposed to it, and I don't know if we should be really promoting drug use in a kid's movie. Though what really makes the plot abhorrent is the panther. There's a scene where he's approaching Rita when she's being used as bait for a trap, and he comes across as either trying to unnerve her it just comes across in a weird way. I mean, I can't tell if he's trying to scare her before he eats her, or if, or if he's actually suggesting that he's going to actually he's actually going to do her. Yes, we have a antagonist that seems to come across as if he's going to rape the female protagonist, or at least leading female support character. And I'm like, why? Maybe it's my dirty mind adding something to the movie that wasn't intended. Maybe it was something the voice actors did and no one thought to change it. Because the Panther has a very um, sultry, lust, lusty, lustful voice. I guess I should would be the best way of describing it. And it comes across as very inappropriate when talking to Rita as he does. Especially when he's like, are you going to let your boyfriend command you, command you around like that? Like he's suggesting that Rita should leave Hugo and go to his side. And be his girl, his woman. Like, like, why did this whole sexually suggested plot point have to exist, or at least be capable of being interpreted as a sexually suggestive scene? At, 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 at any rate, it just feels just completely inappropriate for this movie. Maybe, maybe it's just me, but it honestly, it makes me say you should just stay away from this movie altogether. <sighs> I guess I should move on to visuals now, though, for animation, and it's not the worst, but it feels majorly lazy a lot of the time. <sighs> Jack constantly is shown eating fruit or meatballs. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry about that. But yeah, he's an omnivore, which doesn't bug me so much, but 
It's the way he eats that comes across as lazy. Instead of, like, chewing food like most normal people do, Jack usually just swallows the fruit whole, stem and all. Yes, he literally, there's literally a scene in this movie where he eats a pineapple and just swallows it whole. I mean, how does he even do that? What sort of biology does Jack have to have, or at least his species have to have, to be able to swallow a pineapple without chewing it, or cutting it open, considering how much that, considering how difficult it is to open up a, a pineapple? Yes, the rewards are worth it, but... How exactly does he eat one without hurting himself, considering the, the way you got, considering all the things on the outside of it? Don't ask me to explain it. I call it lazy writing, or no, I'm sorry, not lazy writing, lazy, lazy animation here. I mean, don't get me wrong. In the original animated movies, he does eat bananas without taking the peel off and stuff, just biting right into them. Which doesn't bug me that much, considering at least the banana peel isn't s something that's like hard that you'd have a problem biting into. But at least he's biting into them and not eating them like in one go. <sighs> in terms of, I guess we'll move on to music now. There's only a small handful of musical numbers, and they pretty much are upbeat songs. There's a bow that's by Rita the Fox, which is meant to be sort of a lullaby. But the movie also bookends in terms of its musical numbers as well, with basically using flip flopping, flopping and free or something as the song, I think. Maybe, maybe there's some. Maybe it's meant to be a different title or something, but that seems to be like the major early on leaker, lyrics or something, if I'm remembering correctly, because I watched this movie only a couple days ago, and the despite the fact the movie the song's a bit catchy. It's not particularly memorable after a couple days, really. Maybe if I re-expose myself to it, I could bother to mem start memorizing some of the lyrics, but I really don't want to. <sighs> Especially considering the last point, I guess, when it comes to anything really to sound here, is that some of the voice actors are just terrible in this movie. I wouldn't say they're as bad as, say, the worst voice actor in Garzy's Wing, but they're up there. <sighs> Especially um Charlie, who basically makes meatballs, so his name is Meatball Charlie, who feeds Jack food and is trying to protect him from being forced to live for other people's entertainment from the movie industry or something, I think was the second movie. Though maybe he came in during the TV series, and I wouldn't know anything about that at all, so I don't know. And I really don't want to hunt down the material to find out. In conclusion, I guess, though, honestly, just stay away from Amazon Jack. It, it has some rather weak animation. It doesn't really tell a particularly interesting story at all. It has bad, has poor comedy, ex, poor comedy, or at least bad comedy because it's not done properly. It has, sorry, I dropped the box. Not that we can't hear me shaking it, or at least the disc rattling it. And it has plot elements that are both inappropriate for young children and horrifying. I, I just don't, I still don't understand why that plot point needs to exist in a movie that's obviously meant, that's obviously meant for kids, but is completely inappropriate for a movie for kids. Maybe it's meant for the adults that have to suffer through watching this with their kids who would catch on to that stuff. But even so, I still say it shouldn't be in there at all, because eventually they'll go back and realize it's there and feel, I don't know, horrible, but maybe they feel like their childhood's been violated when they realize it's in there. If they ever go back to try and capture that childhood nostalgia, Lord knows that sometimes it definitely doesn't help me with some of these movies. <sighs> I was planning on talking about the ghoul school for Halloween, but sort of got sidetracked. Maybe we'll do that next year. Maybe I'll make it a double feature or something with the other movie, considering it's about vampires, at least. Somewhat appropriate. But yeah, Amazon Jack is just, just something to stay away from. Entirely. It's just it's just not a good kids movie. It's definitely not the worst movie out there, but it's definitely not a good movie to show to its targeted demographic. 
at least in my opinion. Next week, maybe I'll probably be watching another of these eight animated movies. But I might do a decent movie instead of um, a morally questionable movie, I should say, we got this week. Or at least it feels that way. So maybe next week we'll be taking a look at um, Dragon Hunters, which is weird in its own way. But it's not a bad movie in my opinion. Maybe we'll get this. Maybe my tune will change after a rewatching, though. We'll find out.